be riblets touching. Now we on some John's busting. Uh, the neck is stupid, ranges electrocuting. Raised where the text was booming, gang spraying wet and stupid. I made it all now, I'ma lay it all out. The boss with clout, uh, yeah. Hey, I'm back with my Superman cape on, man. You heard him back in that booth spitting them bars. You heard you want to collab? Get at me. Send me a DM on Instagram. I got you on the collab and the promo. One great price. You're Z-Lord. Yo, if you need organic promo to thousands of people, let me promote you on my YouTube channel with 64,000 subscribers as well as on this Instagram page that's reaching 1.9 million accounts per month. You heard? Rappers, singers, brands, stores, get at me for that promo. I remember one time Brie Lowell was going to jam and they had a bunch of depth. And uh, some people from City Hall walking through the hallway, we happened to be going to jam. And everybody in that house down there was, let me see, it's 33 cells on each side. So that's what, 66 people. Out of 66 people, 55 dudes have scars on their face. Got Big Hook on the phone and St. Laz on the phone. What's good, my mm -hmm. brother? What's good? What's good? Yo, Laz, what's happening, bro? How you doing today, man? I'm good, man. I'm chilling, man. How you doing? I'm hanging in there, man, you know, as best as can be right now. Yeah, man. What that day-to-day -day like in there, man? I know how that shit be, though. It's just the monotony of it, man. You know, every day, you know, something different happens. You know, every day, you know, dodging the bullshit with the police and the ops and all that. But other than that, man, we just regular day in hell, homie. We, we, we do what we do, trying to make it to the next day. That's a fact, my brother. This place right here, the environment's a little better, a little more open, a little less tense, not as, not as violent, you know, so it's a little easier. It's a nice little tone down. Yeah, man. Why, well, you just got there or something? Uh, what, 10 months now I've been in? Yeah, man. So, you know, trying to make the best of it. Oh, you said you was talking about something that happened on Rikers Island back in the days when dudes ain't know who you was and you came to the house? Yeah, you know, so many things happened. And after the right, the island was a lot different. She's 74, adolescents at war. It's a lot, it's different than it is now. It's always been a violent environment. But sometimes you gain some of the closest comrades and friends when y'all go through that adversity with the criminal justice system or whatever, man. But, um, you know, you get through it, and it definitely still stop and still. It definitely make a man out of you. But at that particular time, 1989, 90, 91, I mean, it had to be one of the most violent places on the face of the earth at that time. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden it was like, it was getting cut and stabbed every day. Mm. Compared to prior to that, it was mostly fights. That's when you showed who you was when you had a knuckle game. And then all of a sudden it turned into a razor tag. And almost everybody that was somebody got caught up in it in some shape, way, form, or fashion. Mm. Looking back on it, look, looking back on it, it was crazy. Because there was just so many dudes just involved in it. You had the Brooklyn and Bronx thing. You had the Brooklyn and Queens thing. Then you had individual houses going at it. Then dudes, like I was in the house at one time three lower where dudes had to do the police before they wanted to come in that house. Cause it was so notorious for dudes getting cut and stabbed every day. It was three lower the terror dog. You had a lot of famous housing areas, but that one just in those years took the cake. Four main house of pain, uh, four times the butcher shop. But when they came up with that three lower the terror dog, it was like a whole new universe down there. Certain officers didn't even want to work in that house. It was so violent down there. Mm. It seemed like every time they let somebody out, they let them out the cell, somebody was getting cut as bad. Then the Brooklyn Bronx thing started, and that became a thing, because at first one side was like half Bronx, half Brooklyn. So dudes was getting cut over that. And just on and on and on. So some of the stuff that, um, 
my brother Fuquan alluded to that thing on the visit. That was a Brooklyn Bronx episode. But it was, it was episodes that preceded that and episodes after that. John Rambo and my co-host and killer got into it. I just dropped the episode today when Shadow spoke about that situation. Oh, Chinese Shadow? Shadow from the stop. Boy, all right, that's my boy. I was wondering if that's my boy, yeah. I haven't seen him in years, but that's my boy, and he was around, yeah. You know, that, it was certain events, man, that's like, nobody could forget him at that, because that was two, two dudes of a real reputation and name brand. John Rambo was just coming back to the building. He was one of the main guys in the Bronx. You had my oldest gonna kill one of the main guys from Brooklyn. And they actually, that whole thing started because of the police. The police instigated that whole situation with them. Because John and Killer had didn't know each other. John came back from HBM. Killer had four main on Smash. They put John in four upper. And there was a lot of instigating. The police was going bigger and back and forth about which one, which one of them had the tougher guy in their housing area. Mm. So when the whispers got back to Kay, Kay went up there and spoke to John, like, listen, I don't know you, I don't have no issues with you, but this is what's swirling around. And then this shit happened on the visit where he snatched, where he snatched Kay, he snatched the chain from Kay, and they, and they got into it. And like, that's one of the best fights dudes said they ever seen on Rackers Island. That fight between them two. Cause they was going at it before they even went on it. They didn't even, like they, they, they did this guy postponed because they was back there fighting for so long over that situation. Mm. So that was a talk to guy snatching the chain off a Brooklyn guy. You had the three code events from Dog, Dubo, and Un, and Stan had cut on So then the Brooklyn Bronx thing just took on a life of his own after that. One incident to another incident. My first night, I come to Loa, the brother Prince from Eden, out of Edom on the Bronx, I come in and I'm asking him about the fall because you know everything was about the fall. That fall was a status symbol at that time. So I'm like, what's the fall? So he's like, yo, I got nine to quit. But I'm like, yo, you the suicide? How you got? The next morning I come out, the motor and a two boat and a CA. I come in the CA. I'm like, yo, what's up with this fall? First of all, this is going about. He ain't gonna be there later. And there, so up when we went to jail, he got seen, got him cut on the steps, and you know. It was just all, and that Brooklyn Bronx thing just took on a life of his own after that. Mm. It was back and forth. And a lot of, a lot of unknowing brothers from both girls got caught up in that, got cut, got stabbed, not even knowing what was going on. You know, so they started trying to split us up the housing areas, putting everybody from Brooklyn that was repping at that time in three lower, putting everybody that was repping the Bronx up there. They, they didn't even, because one side of that two up was Bronx, but the other side was Flatbush. So it, it was funny because almost every house in area, one side, Brooklyn was well represented. You said Flatbush had a whole house, and what and what house was that? It was two up at that time when that jumped off. The Bronx never had a whole, like, three long was all Brooklyn house. We got all the Bronx dudes that was adversary house. But they couldn't do that in two up. Flatbush had one side, Simeon and them, and the Bronx dudes was all on the other side. Like Mar 9, you had one side Brooklyn, one side Uptown. Mar 8, one side Brooklyn, one side Queens. Four Main, one side Spanish, one side Brooklyn. Four Upper, both sides Brooklyn. So I'm saying, you, you should come in, the commonality in that. Like, you couldn't, like, I don't know if it is, is it you just had a, uh, an abundance of Brooklyn dudes that was repping at that time, and we was everywhere. In every house at night. So when, it, when, it, when, it, when the beef between the Brooklyn and Bronx escalated, I didn't really see how they could win because we just had, we just outnumbered them. Mm. You couldn't, there was no house that you could really go to where Brooklyn wasn't well represented at that time. Yeah, you it, bro. And, it, and then the beef just took on those two incidents with Un and with, with Chase on the business floor, that kind of like sparked it even more. Then Prince, and then after that, every every day, the police didn't know what to do because they like they can't check. A, they wasn't checking full cars like address and where you from before they put you in a housing area. So it was just your bad luck if you fell in the wrong housing area or you fell in the wrong place at the wrong. Like, that that the, the incident that Fruquan spoke about on a visit for prior to that, maybe a week prior to that, we had just. Jumped on the Bronx doors from two up in the yard. So 
So the, that next incident was the visit. And see, they kept going back and forth. Then like two weeks after that, they caught us in the yard. But they procrastinated in a, a smart, big and correctional to came. There was only like eight of us out there. And they came out like 40 deep. But they procrastinated on getting to it. And then next you know, a correctional officer came out there and, and dragged all the us inside. Whereas when we had that opportunity, we, so we got right to it. We didn't waste no time. We got right to it. So who, who, and you, it was always, who y'all had got it on with from the Bronx that was in the yard that day? Uh, K-9, John was already gone. One pound. I don't know where John went. It was just K-9, Shawan, um, Science. Yeah, Science. Um, Stan was already gone for the Bronx. Brave Day, maybe Best in Peace was already gone for the Bronx. So th those are the main ones that I remember that far back. The rest, I didn't really get to meet a lot of them dudes because we were having something at that time. So it wasn't really nothing to talk about. Um, what's the off? Gargamel, what's all the wacko? Yeah, wacko. That was that was the dude that they had that was really in their house that was going for them for going hard for the Bronx at that time. And it was funny because it, later on when we got up north, a lot of us became cool and we put all that thorough that thorough nonsense behind us. But at that time, it was just some of us, so many of us, was just so caught up in that. And you know, we were 17, 18, 16, 17, 18 years old. All of us, most of us, facing serious cases. So that was just like exercise in between us fighting our criminal cases. That adolescent energy. Yes, yes. And it's like they say, still sharp and still. So dudes was like, man, you really knew who was who. But it wasn't about fighting no more. Everybody was getting caught. So you had to be on your P's and Q's, and you had to be ready at all times. If not, you know, I remember one time three low was going to jail. And they had a bunch of depths. And uh, some people from City Hall walking through the hallway. We happened to be going to jail. And everybody in that house down there was, let me see, it's 33 cells on each side. So that's what, 66 people. Out of 66 people, 33 north and south side, 55 dudes had scars on their faces. Yeah. From the razor tag war that we was going through and participating in at that time. Crazy. Dude, that was new, new, new admissions coming through, hearing about three low in the summer dome. They would rather fight the police. Like, we actually seen dudes. They're bringing dudes down there, telling you, you're going to three lower, and they start fighting the police right there on the scene because they didn't want to come in that house out here. They, it was so notorious for dudes getting cut and stabbed down here. Who was down there? Who was down there, you said, in three low at the time? Uh, it, it started off, it kept switching because he's going to the path of me, old dog. N.A. on one side. Me, Mo Dog, N.A., Fast Fred from Bushwick, Light from Flatbush, um, Big Nose Lou from the Bronx, Lee from the Bronx. On the other side, Dupo, Un, K.P., may he rest in peace. Um, there's, there's the Bravers from Bronx, who's down there, that's what, um, O.G. Matt, the founder of New York Bloods on the, on the, on the, was down there at that time. Ewok, Oreo for the Bronx is down there at that time. And then after that, it kept getting the Nino came, Fruit came, uh, Tojo. Uh, it was just so many people. Um, Pretty Boy Star. Oh, uh, damn. Um, cool Out. Um, boom. It was just so many of us from Brooklyn down there that after that, sometimes it was hard for us to get along. Because there's one phone on each side, and then you got everybody down there as people. So we trying to be. Uh, what court is court you to everybody to make sure everybody got that phone? But it used to be tense amongst us sometimes. It was only one phone and in the whole house? phone in the cell houses at that time. It was only one phone on each side. That's so cool. we had to share. And what dudes don't remember is that phone was a status symbol. The more phone time you had, the more somebody you were supposed to have been. So, so that's why when Prince said he had nine to click. And we like, hold on, you suicide. And at that time, the suicide stayed out all night from 11 at night to 7 o'clock in the morning. So they had the perk of having a phone all night. So that was a total, 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 that was he got seen down on the steps and he got caught. And then it just, that, that whole Brooklyn Bronx beat just took on a whole life of his own. Every day. 
Like they took the security guard to start checking floor cars for addresses to make sure they wasn't putting the Bronx dude in the wrong housing area or Brooklyn dude in the wrong housing area because they knew somebody was going to end up in the clinic or going to East on Elmo's hospital to get their face and stuff. But they say gladiator school, it, it really was at that time. Wow. It really was. You, 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 made, you made the name around that time. How long you had, how long you laid up in the four building before you went up top? From May 90, I ain't go up north until um, September 91. So I laid up that whole time. Plus, I was there previously for eight months. Before that, 89, laying up. So I had, like, when me and Killer came through his coast building, everybody was surprised. But then they really wasn't because we from the same project. But we both had reputations and we were both well known. So Robo Chuck, they rest in peace, Pookie, uh, Pretty Tall from out of Brownsville, Ron Dude from out of Brownsville. I don't think Dude was there yet, but when we came through, but it was so, everybody that had a name at that time recognized our names when we came back through his code of it, it, it was just so many dudes down there at that time. Everybody was trying to be a stand up. You have guy one minute left. And, and, and be about their business, man. You know, I'm glad I don't see the. Too many of them no more still locked up in the penitentiary. Hopefully they're out there living and living well. It, but it was just a thing at that time. And it was a damn shame, but it was a thing. Because when, when they wanted to show off how violent Rackadano was, and they brought him to that C-74, they brought them to the three lower to see us. And they paraded us like, you know, like fucking uh, zoo animals. Everybody had a scar on their face. And everybody got murder cases at that time. Everybody 16, 17, 18 years old. Mm. You know, they used that to show how violent. You know, it, it was. People didn't do much to stop it. You know, I don't know what did they expect. They got all this adrenaline, and all this youth there, and it was already coming from the street with violent cases. What did they expect was going to happen? Thank yeah. you for using Securus. Goodbye.